We have with us Tammy Benheim, uh, the Consul General of the Israeli Embassy in Bengaluru and thank you so much for joining us there. So with the Israel-Iran tensions escalating, the question at this point in time is, will Israel retaliate? Uh, the question is open. Israel will do all it has to do to keep everybody living in Israel. Israelis, non-Israelis, Jews, uh, Hindus, Christians, Muslims, everybody safe and secure. Now, it's just it's not just increased tensions. On the night between the 13th and the 14th of April, the Iranian regime launched over 320 projectiles from its own territory into Israel. These projectiles are UAV, what we call, you know, suicide bombers, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and rockets. And when you're shooting over 300 of all of these types of weapons, your aim is to destroy. Your aim is to kill people. And this is what they did. So it's much more than tensions now. Iran has been for years saying that its aim is to destroy the Iranian regime, actually. Let's be very clear here. It's to destroy Israel and destabilize the Middle East. And they've been doing it for years, for tens of years, through their terror proxies, through Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, and I guess when they saw that it wasn't doing enough, that it wasn't causing enough damage, that we, that it wasn't destabilizing the region, not on the 13th, between 13th and 14th of April, they decided to, you know, for the first time, actually, we have to mention, shoot at us directly from Iran. So what would be the next step of Israel now? We're discussing it. We, the war cabinet is sitting, obviously has been sitting for the you know, past more than 24 hours. We're discussing it, uh, the government with the heads of defense, with our allies, the same allies uh, headed by the United States, Britain, France, and other allies who actually helped us on the ground shoot down these projectiles, shoot down the, in, the ballistic missiles, shoot down the UAVs before they even entered Israel. So with the same allies, we're discussing what we can do. Obviously, we have to make sure, as I said, that Israel is safe, the people in Israel are safe, and that the region is secure. I mean, talking about uh, working with allies, the U.S. has already said that it wouldn't really join Israel in any kind of retaliatory strikes against uh, Iran. It said it, and I think we've proven time and time again, also in our current war against the Hamas terrorists, who are still holding 133 Israeli people hostage. You know, we have to remember the October 7th massacre when Hamas entered Israel, brutalized, raped, and killed 1,200 people and kidnapped 255 more, of which 133 are still being held hostage. Now, even this attack, this massacre, was helped, perpetrated, uh, funded, and they trained by Iran to do this. Uh, so we're fighting this war on our own. We're not asking anybody to join us on the ground. We're fighting these terror, this terror organization for our survival, for our security. But I must say, we're fighting a world war. Okay, we're fighting for everybody here, obviously for ourselves. But also if these terror organizations see that they can come and harm and kill and destroy, then go and hide behind civilians and nobody does anything. It's a lesson that they will learn the world over. Iran has terror cells all over the world. It has the terror proxies I mentioned in all the Middle East. If they see that Israel and from here the world or other countries just let them do what they want and go hide, then you know the lesson will be learned very quickly and it will not stop in Israel. And sadly, we've seen terror attacks even in Russia lately. Uh, terror doesn't stop if we don't stop it. In fact, the entire world is on an edge right now. Most of them are really hoping that this wouldn't really escalate further and that there would be some kind of a, uh, a peace brokerage that would be um, uh, successfully meted out between the two countries. Do you think that that is somewhere on the horizon here? Look, we can pray and hope, right? Israel has proven again and again that it does not want war. We didn't attack the Hamas terrorists. You know, on October 6th, everything, everything was quiet and they attacked us within our borders on October 7th. When there was a possibility for a hostage deal, the first time, you know, the first times, we gave whatever was demanded of us to get hostages back. We actually agreed to do the same. And I can't remember if it was April 13th or the day before, Hamas yet again said no to another proposal by the international actors, including the United States, including Egypt. Obviously, Israel agreed to the terms. 
Hamas again said no. You know, we have to understand here, Israel is a democratic country. Israel is a rational, responsible player. But we're dealing with irrational, crazy extremist forces, whether it's the Iranian regime or whether it's the his proxies, their proxies in our region, like Hamas, like the Houthis. And if I can just say one word about the Houthis, for months now, they've been attacking, you know, boats in international trading routes, harming the world, damaging economically also India. And on, you know, on Saturday, the Iranian regime itself hijacked a boat, a Portuguese boat, but it has 17 Indian sailors on it who are now being held and who knows what in Iran. You know, this doesn't start and stop with Israel. People who might try to think that and say, ah, you know, it's an Israeli problem. It is not. It's an international problem. I mean, talking about uh, anxiety amongst Indians living in both Iran as well as Israel, can the Israel government promise the safety of Indian citizens there? Look, we can promise that we will do our utmost and protect everybody in Israel as much as we can. In our houses and in our apartment buildings, we have safe rooms. In public areas, we have safe rooms. Regrettably, we have to have this because of, you know, we live among uh, terrorist organizations and we have threats uh, that we face daily, like from the Iranian regime. Uh, and of course, everybody living in Israel, including the Indians who are visiting there or short term working there or long term working there, you know, they get the entire envelope. As we saw horribly on October 7th, and we saw again, nothing is 100% foolproof. The Israeli government, the Israeli Defense Forces are doing 100% of what they can, but it can never be 100%. Even in the Iranian attack yesterday, you know, we, as I said, we intercepted with the allies and with the Israeli defense system over 90% of all the projectiles sent at us. But still, a young seven-year-old Arab-Israeli girl is critically injured. She's fighting for her life in the hospital now. Obviously, the intent of the Iranians was to cause a lot more damage, a lot more death. But even this one girl, what did she do? Why does she, you know, why is the Iranian regime so intent on trying to kill her? Um, so, yeah, so we'll do whatever we can to answer your question, but nothing, you know, nothing is 100% uh, foolproof. Just to add to that, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of civilians who have died with the Israel strikes as well. What is your message to them? Israel did not want this war. Um, you know, I think Israel and is trying to prevent deaths on both sides, on our side and on the Palestinian side. You know, you see us crying for everybody wounded. You see Israel doing everything it can with the UN, with international organizations, with other countries to bring in aid to the people in Gaza. But let's not forget, we have 133 people, young women who are being raped, elderly people over 80 years old who are being held. We have a baby who was nine months when he was kidnapped and he's a year and almost two months now. This is not normal things. Israel has to do, listen, we let them penetrate our borders and kidnap these people. It's our obligation to do everything we can to bring them back. And as I said, Israel has agreed to all the deals offered until now to release these hostages. The terrorists haven't. The moment they do and they are back, then come and we'll have the discussion and see. Israel is very clear. We need to get the hostages back. We need to make sure Hamas cannot attack us again. It's very simple, the two things we want, and I think very self-explanatory and very reasonable. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. So that was the Consul General talking to us about how the Israel's strategy is pretty clear. One, bring the hostages back, and two, agree to the deals that have been laid out. Pratibha Raman in Bengaluru for NDTV.